and that is the biggest learning that i had whenever i hear news or i read something that so many people are being retrenched from the organization they have to go back and their assets and everything will be sent to the home we always say that treat this as your own organization this is a family and one certain one fine day we say that okay you are no more a family these are i i, I completely understand the fact that these are organization decisions but how as an hr how as an hr fraternity we can make a difference how we can give that moral support to the employees hello everyone welcome to the people led show i'm your host tesin kazi and our guest for today is the incredible surya mukherjee surya is the vice president of human resources at incred financial services and is a seasoned hr leader with almost two decades of experience in the field he excels in business partnering compensation and benefits performance management systems and hr operations across industries recently he was also recognized with the inclusive talent leader award 2024 by softwordic welcome surya thank you so much for joining us today thank you tazin thank you infido for uh, uh, inviting me for this uh, podcast Absolutely, Surya. Surya, so you you typically we start on the conversation on a little lighter note. We want to get to know you better. So, who is Surya? Okay. Who is the human behind the human resources? Tell us more about yourself. So, apart from the work that uh, I do, if I talk about Surya, Surya is uh, a family man. Surya is a sport uh, enthusiast and uh, a avid learner, uh, still uh, a student at heart. I spend a lot of time during the weekends with my kids, with my family, because I I felt that. majority of the week days are spent in office either some of the meeting events so saturday sunday is the time that i get to spend time because i have a son who is 3 year old daughter is still she is 13 so she is busy in study and all but yeah my son is still too young and love to play with me was spend time with me so i i used to i love to spend time with him like i said that i am a sport avid person i i love watching soccer I used to play uh, soccer during my school days, college days, but I stopped uh, playing uh, once I joined the corporate. Uh, but I still used to play uh, till 2017. But I met with an accident um, while playing football only uh, in one of the HR events uh, and, and fractured my knee. And then after that, I stopped because I realized that age is telling me not to take a risk <laughs> and do do more adventures. But yet still, I I, I love running. I, Uh, participate in marathons and i am still a uh, student at heart so i keep upgrading myself either reading something or some of the other things uh, which is latest is happening in the industry uh, i'm doing a uh, chro course from excelry jamshedpur right now which is in progress so probably by december we will i will end up with that course also so that's about me in that thank you surya thank you so much for that amazing very consolidated you know holistic introduction and i think what i like the best is that you know you're ma- you're, you're trying to make mo- the most of you know your children being young and spending time with them because i think once they grow up and then then they are in their own world and then you know you lose out on that time when they were young so yeah. i, I it's, yeah. so that was really wholesome to hear uh, uh so yeah moving on and like you know maybe we and we'll soon get into the topic of ai and hr which is what we are here to discuss today But you know, just mm-hmm. kind of warming up a little bit, I wanted to understand from you what are your top three challenges or priorities that you want to solve in twenty twenty four. So I think uh, the couple of challenges I would not say, uh, say challenges, but the priorities Price. that I will say for me and my team is uh, one. The first and foremost is the uh, increasing the workforce productivity and the performance because cost being the the major thing where. post covid environment everybody is very conscious of so one thing that everybody is looking for is that how we can enhance the workforce and pro- workforce productivity and the performance and the efficiency so that we can utilize the maximum potential of the workforce and uh, minimize the cost so that is one thing second the, the the one of the most prioritized thing for us is the digital transformation so we are trying as an hr so we follow the uh, paperless organization we don't use any paper or any file for that matter for record keeping also so everything is digital we are using an hrms systems however there is a lot of scope for being the nbfc industry there are a lot of regulations keep coming in from rbi or sebi or maybe different authorities so i think in, uh, integration of the digital technology in various business segments is one of the key priorities that we are focusing on wherever we can leverage the technology to improve the performance wherever we can support the employees by reducing the manual work that is one of the top priorities that we are so we are closely working with the cto also that how we can leverage the technology and support the employees which will in turn help them improve the productivity and the performance and third 
the 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 biggest priorities will be the holistic well being because because of the increasing the the stress level increasing performance pressures i think there is a lot to do in the bringing the work life balance among the employees so i think a uh, lot many organizations have come up with many things and uh, we keep evaluating uh, many many small small activities that we can do to support the employees to take care of the well being of the employees it is not only the health it is not only the insurances that we provide to the employees but also the financial health the if we can help them prioritizing their uh, taxes or maybe the the fund how to manage the funds we keep doing lot of sessions within organization since are uh, being into nbfc we have lot of experts within the organization also who can support in various investment opportunities from the wealth segment so we keep doing that so our approach is that if if the employees are the, the employees well being is taken care of then they will be th- that automatically contributes to the productivity that will automatically enhance the productivity of the employee so in turn all those will be the three major areas that we are uh, looking forward to make a difference for 2024 Got among it. all other all other priorities that we have understood i think you've pretty much you know captured the three priorities you know in a very succinct manner and what i'm seeing is that the first two priorities are kind of interlinked because you want Correct. to you, you want to you start using digital transformation and you want to also use it to increase employee productivity and efficiency Correct. So, so like i said that all three are interlinked even the employee well being whether it is the digital transformation or automation of the processes within the organization all those will all these two will linked with the productivity and the performance and all those will help uh, help increasing the productivity and the performance of the employee so uh, but yes a lot of lot of work has to be done uh, till we reach to that level where we will actually start seeing the results and roi coming in from in terms of the productivity increase or in terms of because we are growing very rapidly in 2023 we have become winning one of the unicorn in terms of the headcount in terms of the product in terms of the number of organizations everything is growing very rapidly uh, to keep up the pace uh, i think the the digital transformation will definitely help the employee well being is one of the key priorities and all these will definitely lead to our third priority of increasing the productivity and performance so there are a lot of other things also we are doing we are focusing on the training and development we are focusing on the engagement of the employee so, so all those are there definitely will support all these three priorities but yes these are the three priorities that we are looking at for 2024 so if i may ask like how are you looking at digital transformation any early signs or any early projects or early initiatives that you are taking up to kind of uh, reel into the productivity and efficiency angle so uh, what are those certain initiatives that you've started working on yeah so we we evaluating we are evalu- we are discussing with various businesses that what are their challenges that they are facing in current setup what are the opportunities that we have for in terms of the automation where we can bring in the technology and then we are taking step by step depending upon the business priorities depending upon the criticality of the issues or the challenges that the business is following or the facing currently so wow. right now during our offsites which we had recently last week in malaysia we were, dis- we were discussing with the collection team that they they want the automation to be done because they they face a lot of data uh, being an nbfc it is all about data and the data confidentiality data the all the the regulation that are coming in from the rbi it becomes very imperative that we manage things very very critically so i think that is how we are discussing with the operations team that is how we are dis- discussing with the collection sales and all other teams that where we can bring the technology but depending upon the priorities not we can we understand that we may not be able to uh, do all these things simultaneously we may not be able to cater the requirement of all the departments at one go but yes one at a time maybe solving the problems the most critical problem of one of the department and then moving on to the next and then next so that's how the the plan is that probably by end of the year please got it so was security also concerned were you looking at as a parameter for evaluating platforms and how did you go about that i think uh, for choosing any platform i think it is a team effort that goes behind before we find analyze anything one is definitely the functional team who actually evaluate the application in terms of the usability in, in terms of the solving problem and all other things but again close coordination work with the the technical team who evaluates from this uh, security perspective scalability perspective close coordination with the finance team from the funding and the budget perspective and the legal and compliance so that the ndas and all the the compliance related things can be taken care of so it it's once we go we get a go ahead from all these departments then only any solution gets get a go through and then we start looking at 
for the implementation stage. But I think before that, it's it's a teamwork that works uh, behind evaluating any application Got it. that we evaluate. I think one of the things that I've heard also in some conversations with HR professionals is convincing leadership about a particular tool mm-hmm. or a platform. If people are in a situation where leadership is not convinced, how do you convince them? I think uh, where we go wrong mostly is that we don't focus on who wants to understand what. So if we are clear is that because most of the time we don't know what to measure, like you were, we were discussing, that the unclear ROI is one of the challenges that we could not convince the management that why we need this particular application. So if we are clear that this is what we are looking for and this is what we, we are going to measure and this is how the ROI will be uh, measured, then I think half the battle will be won. Second, like I was saying that if you talk about the usability with the CTO, then he may not be convinced. So you have to talk to the CTO or CIO about that, how this will emphasize the technological advancement, how this will help you to scale up the, the operation within the organization, how this has a potential of innovation within the organization. For C, CFOs, you have to speak about that, how this is going to highlight the cost saving, how it is, what are the ROI potential for using it, what how the financial forecasting the improvement in the financial forecasting will help. So if you talk the relevant things with the relevant people, I think the the, the things will be a little easier for you to convince. Got but again, like I said, that you have to educate them because there are a lot of misconceptions, there are a lot of uh, 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 words around uh, in the industry. So more you educate them, more you talk to them about what they want to understand, they want to listen, I think then things will be in control. Got it. That's you know what I like? Point. Yeah, what I like, Surya, is that all the three points that you mentioned with three different personas, I think also tie back to the first point that you said, which is understanding your problem and what is it that you're looking for. I think if you don't have clarity on that, then convincing all these people might become, you know, a difficult job because you, you yourself don't know, you know, what uh, what it is that you're going to do with the yeah. plan. Moving on and uh, along the same thread, right? So uh, you, you now you started integration, you know, you know, got the buy-in integration implementation, but also at any point were you concerned that is my team prepared to, you know, manage a tool like that? Like what kind of skill development would they need? How did you go about that process? So that is, I think, is the is the first and foremost priority, or maybe the the point of discussion for any automation that we we do in the organization. That what is the current skill set that we have, and whatever tool, whichever tool that we are planning to implement, what kind of skill set that is required? Is it something out of the box skill required, or the people will require just a training on updation on that tool and they, they can start using it. So that is one aspect that we evaluate first and then we start implementing. And during the implementation also, we keep the people involved during the entire implementation process. That is how we get the buy-in also because uh, half of the implementation fails because of the resistance to change. Got it. Because of the various innovation people have that, okay, if, if these all these jobs can do the the AI or the tool or the platform will do, then what will what what is I'm I'm going to do? So if you are able to to clarify those doubts, if you are able to convince them on the benefit that the platform is going to or tool is going to bring to them, how they can leverage the technology and then improve their performance and spend more time on the strategic thing than on the operational thing. I think a lot of things fall in place and people are convinced and they put additional effort to learn those new tools. Training is obviously one thing that we, we keep buffer at least for 10, 15 days. We keep a buffer for at least multiple external training, the vendor training as well as train the trainer kind of a concept where the internal somebody from two or three people from the internal team who are good in the technology will understand, learn the technologies and then internally keep supporting the the, the other team members as and when it is required. So Got training it. is one definitely is the key factor where we focus very highly whenever we implement any new solution within the organization. Got it. So you're shifting gears a little bit. Uh, now that you are in the process of, you know, integrating AI into your system, are there any misconceptions that you had had before that you can think of that have been cleared now? And you're like, why was I even thinking that? So I think one definitely was, like we discussed in, uh, earlier, is the security purpose. Security mm-hmm. is one of the things that, yes, whether it is secure or not, whether we will get the uh, clearance from the IT team or not. So I think those were definitely one of the topics that we were concerned about. Second was whether the team will accept it or not, how how the team will accept it, adopt it, and that will contribute. Because at the end of the day, since we have convinced on the ROI to the CXOs, we have to give results also. So that is one of the things that we had in mind that 
whether we will be able to do that or not. And uh, I think how how the integration was one of the things that we we focused very heavily and we ponder over that whether it will be able we will be able to integrate or not because during the discussions with the vendor we realized that all the vendors says that yes everything is possible the moment you actually start implementing you start realizing that okay this is not possible that is not possible uh, you can do 50 percent of this particular activity but you will not be able to do 50 percent of the remaining activity so and then you have to start thinking work around that if this 50 percent is not possible what is the way out how we can still continue and still continue to utilize that and get the maximum benefit out of that tool platform because i don't think you have a single tool which has which can give you the 100 percent what you are looking at so there will be always some or the other thing that you are not getting or you or the 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 tool or the platform is not able to provide you a solution so i think those are a couple of uh, queries that we had uh, while we were evaluating the ai that how do we go about it so got it uh, got it. I'll shift gears a little bit, and I want to, you know, take this conversation on a little lighter note. So you've been okay. in the, uh, Suri, you've been in the industry, uh, in the BFSI sector for around more than a decade now. Just yeah. wanted to understand any interesting, or fun, or thought provoking, provoking story from your years in HR. You know, our audience always loves a good insight scoop. So not from the BFSI, but yes, I, I would say that it's a thought provoking experience for me also. It was mm-hmm. very early uh, career of my uh, early stage of my career. I was working with an IT IT and there was an incident that we sent an employee for an outstation work and he came back after 15, 20 days and he, he was submitted his expense seat and all. And during this scrutiny, we realized that he made up a few goof ups in that expense seat. We don't, we didn't know whether it is intentional that he wanted to make some money or it's an unintentional. So uh, a meeting was set up and the HR head and the business head was there and I was called in that meeting and we had a long discussion with that employee. And he didn't had uh, valid reasons that the mistakes that he did. So the management decided to terminate his services. So, and the HR had said that, okay, we have given the verdict and now you carry out the the, uh, the rest of the processes. And we left the office around 8, 8, 50, 8, 55. I boarded the train from church gate and, and within a few minutes, I got a call from my roommate that, where are you? I said that I'm in train. We said that there are news that they're firing around and the incident that I'm referring to is the Taj attack. That's and after two days, the guy called me and then he narrated the story that after leaving the office, he went and he sat in the gateway of India. And within a few minutes, he started hearing the bullet firing because the, the terrorist entered from that gateway of India and just entered the Taj. He managed somehow to escape from that situation. And when he was narrating, you won't believe I had a view from that. What a mistake that we did. He was not in right frame of mind. He was crying sitting there that what he will do, what he will tell to his parents, what he will tell to his wife, his children at home, that why he has been terminated, why he has been uh, terminated from the organization and he do not have a job from tomorrow and he how he will manage the expenses and all. And that is the biggest learning that I had. Whenever I hear news or I read something that so many people are being retrenched from the organization, they have to go back and their assets and everything will be sent to the home. We always say that treat this as your own organization, this is a family. And once sudden, one fine day we say that, okay, you are no more a family. These are, I, I, I completely understand the fact that these are organization decisions. But how as an HR, how as an HR fraternity, we can make a difference? How we can give that moral support to the employees? So that is one thing I still remember even after almost two decades of my career. Thank you, Surya. Thank you for sharing that extremely sincere anecdote with us. I think this is one of the most raw stories that I have heard in the many interviews that I've taken. So thanks for that. I think that brings me to my last question, Surya, before we wind up, which is if you were to share one advice to, you know, budding HR leaders, those who are new in the system, you know, maybe three, four years of experience, what what is that one advice that you would share to them? So advice, I think one is that I think when we come directly from the college, there are a lot of lot of high expectations that we usually have that uh, are uh, and a lot of quick progressions that we many times intend to have, maybe quick pay rise, quick rising up the ladder in the corporate world and become in a position of authority. Uh, but we often miss the fact that the 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 like we have heard in the Spider Man movies that with uh, great authority is the res- with responsibility comes also. So, and the responsibility with comes with the experience. The more you are experienced, the more you work on the ground, you get seasoned, you get learned about things, and then you progress to an individual or a professional to contribute to the larger 
scheme of the things of the whether it is a corporate world or whether, whether it is a personal uh, matters so i think one thing very important is to accept whatever coming in way and not thinking that this work will not help me growing in my career because in early days of my career even being in hr i managed uh, admin i managed various other activities in one of the organization that i was just uh, i think that is what helped me to be what i am today so accepting whatever challenge coming in your way work giving it 100% to it and then learning the maximum out of it and then moving to the to the next project next role or next assignment so i think that is very one one very important thing that i would like to advise the newcomers or people with 3 4 year of experience i think that is great i think and that's a perfect way to close out uh, being open minded uh, giving 100% to what you're doing and keep learning and keep improving yourself that might that like at the end of the day i think those are the basics that you need to keep following and those basics don't change so uh, you know it's great yeah. that we are reminded of that once more yeah. uh, thank you very much surya i think this conversation was extremely power packed right from you know understanding how get under, you know getting to know your experience of using ai to getting to know you know the, uh, the story from your early years of hr it was you know a full circle so thank you very much for your time and i hope you enjoyed as well yeah very much and thanks uh, uh, again for infido for um, uh, inviting me for this, this uh, session and i'm hoping that i will be able to make some impact to the to the newcomers as well as the hr leaders Perfect. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Surya. Thank uh, you so much.